Only the leaders in the Jewish religion said they understood the great mysteries of God. Sound familiar? Many of the people almost worshipped the Jewish priest as the man of God. Jesus knew the game. They knew Jesus knew the game they were playing on the people. The loving Jesus who could not lie or cover up their religious lies took on the big religious machine. Hypocrite. Arr. He would not compromise. He hit them straight on at the risk of his own reputation and life. The religious system was very wealthy. It controlled everything. They even had tremendous influence on the Roman government. The Jews were slaves not only to the Romans, but also to their own Jewish religious leaders. Jesus had become a major threat because he told the truth and exposed their evil religious tricks to the public. They had to shut him up. Jesus demanded repentance and total separation, but today... This is hardly ever taught in most churches, Christian schools, seminaries, or Bible colleges. Instead, they are told, This is the age of the brotherhood of man. The churches are united under God's Holy Spirit. As you see, God is no respecter of persons. Catholics, Jews, and Protestants alike are all in the great family of God. This is the great revival sweeping the world. They are only pushing the deadly love gospel, another act of apostasy created by the Roman Catholic institution to send even more souls into hell. It is very popular in the so-called Christian unity movements today. What, what really is the love gospel, Dr. Rivera? The love gospel is very dangerous in that it only teaches on part of Christ's teachings. The Lord made it clear that we are to separate ourselves from the world and from false churches. They also leave out his message of God's awful coming judgment and those who will not obey on those who will not obey him. The love gospel says God needs you. He doesn't care how you're living. Join our love group and everything will be okay. Just say I believe in God, then God is happy. He scoops you up in his arms and welcomes you into the family of God. People have been tricked into believing they are saved. There is no change in their lives. They still love the world. The world loves this kind of phony preaching. So does the devil. The Bible says the devils also believe in God and tremble. The Lord Jesus loves the sinner enough to tell it like it is. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He doesn't care if they become upset. Jesus tells him point blank he is in trouble and on his way to hell unless he stops his rebellion against God. He must be truly sorry and stop walking in sin, totally committed his life to Christ, or lose his soul forever. Only a very few will buy that kind of preaching. That's why they hate him. Like today, anyone who openly opposed uh, the wealthy religious system was marked for death. What about your life, Alberto? Have there been any attempts to kill you? Oh, he asked him. Only God Almighty has kept me alive. In London, I was pushed in front of a subway train, and in Ireland, my bedroom was blown up by the, RIA, by the IRA. But nothing in the United States, right? Wrong, Tim. Someone put ground, ground glass in my food at a prayer meeting. I've been shot at at least five times. And then a few years ago, Satan made his most deadly attack on me. It was through false brethren. A Christian who was a dentist and very active in the love gospel movement performed dental surgery on me. While I was under anesthesia, the dentist worked on my upper left second bicuspid tooth. He drilled through the crown to expose a nerve canal. Reamed it out, then he used the Lentulo paste filler to insert the sealer. It broke off. Instead of removing it or telling me about it, I, per I believe he purposely left it in there 
which left me open for infection. Then he covered the tooth with the porcelain crown, so there would be no detection. I believe he knew it would cause infection which could reach the brain, causing death. But the Lord held it back for two years. A mysterious, a mysterious still surrounds that fact that I was introduced to this dentist by friends of my wife's Catholic relatives, some professing to be Baptists. Later, the dentist insisted on cleaning my teeth so he would make his final move. While cleaning my teeth, my gums were sprayed with nerve gas. My wife was waiting out in the front office. She saw a nurse carrying my jacket and asked about me. The nurse was frightened and told my wife, your husband is dying. The gas was supposed to have worked a few hours later when I would be driving the car home. But almost immediately, I collapsed in the dentist chair. My blood pressure dropped to zero. Alberto, what have they done to you? Leave him alone. We are taking good care of him. Nothing like this ever happened before. The dentist was frightened. They gave me a shot to revive me. I responded and they put me in the car and my wife drove me home. What is wrong, doctor? Your husband was too frightened. Just take him home. You'll be fine. I collapsed in the bathroom. My, ner my organs and nerves were becoming paralyzed. I knew I was being poisoned because I had worked with nerve gas when I was a Jesuit studying poisoning techniques. Rome almost won. My wife called Christians to pray for me all over the U.S. and Mexico. Alberto has been poisoned. Let's pray. Yes, I'll call others too. God answered their prayers and saved me from certain death once again. I was in tremendous pain and my face was badly swollen. I went to another dentist who x-rayed my teeth. Dr. Rivera, I can't believe what I see. This looks very dangerous to me. I got to send you to a specialist. He discovered the instrument and spotted the infection and sent me to an endodontist, a specialist in root canals. The endodontist tried to remove the instrument from my tooth. He couldn't. The infection had spread into my cheekbone. He scraped the bone and, dra and drained the infection. Are you still in pain? Oh yes, it caused a lot of damage. It was a close call. Now you can see false brethren can be very dangerous. X-ray A shows a tooth after a normal canal, root canal procedure. X-ray B shows Dr. Rivera's tooth with a broken instrument under the porcelain cap. At right in an actual size lentula paste filler. This is what the Apostle Paul meant when his life was in peril of false brethren in 2 Corinthians 11.26. He's the traitor we've waited for. Another false brother was, Ju was Judas Iscariot who betrayed Christ. He was very religious. Judas preached. He performed miracles, cast out devils, and was constantly with the Lord for three years. Nobody knew that he was an infiltrator among the disciples and apostles except Jesus. Judas had secretly contacted the Jewish priest and the scribes. Judas was under an oath as a hitman. Judas was paid off to protect their religion in the name of God. It was full-scale war between Jesus and the Jewish religious machine, just like today. Jesus knew the heat that was going to hit the disciples after he would be crucified. He prepared them for the battles ahead. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came, I came not to send peace, but a sword. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endures to the end shall be saved. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of this house, of his household? This is hardly ever preached. For unto you it is given in the, in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. That black night when the greatest of all false brethren gave the kiss of death to Christ, 
it was his sign to the soldiers as to who they should arrest. Hell, master. That's him. Grab him. Judas just kissed him. Friend. The mafia uses the same symbol of affection today to a traitor within their organization, the kiss of death. The police took Jesus before the corrupt judges. They already knew the verdict before he walked into the courtroom. Here he comes now. He's guilty. He must die. By sentencing him to death, they violated 18 Jewish laws. In the following years, billions would be sentenced to death the same way for their obedience to Christ's teachings. Will persecution break out again, Dr. Rivera? Yes. Yes, Tim, it's been planned for over 400 years. Today, a price is being put out on the head of any Christian who will not compromise the way they live or what they preach or write. The Vatican will not tolerate any opposition to their goal of religious unity. Members of the same evil religious system put the Lord Jesus to death because they could not stand his teaching. Jesus knew all of this was to fulfill prophecy, and he obeyed his Father in heaven and allowed himself to be beaten and battered. The millions of angels Jesus had created up in glory watched in shock as the creator of the universe was about to be sacrificed. Crucify him! Crucify him! Because of his tremendous love, Jesus held back the angels from wiping out Jerusalem. They spit on the Savior, plucked off his beard, and fulfilled prophecy. Keep back! What a mess! I gave my back to the, to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Isaiah 56 is he a man? There's nothing left of his face. The prophet Isaiah said his visage was so marred more than any man and his, and his form more than the sons of man. Isaiah 52, 14. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Jesus, as the Lamb of God, was crucified and shed his precious blood to wipe away our sins. Huh, he can't even save himself. For God the Father so loved the world, that's you, that he gave his only begotten Son, God the Son, Jesus, that whosoever believeth, clings or trusts, in him should not perish in the lake of fire, but have everlasting life in heaven. John 3.16 All the opposing Jewish religious groups joined together to reject their Messiah. And they did it in the name of God. Even the godless Roman governor Pontius Pilate acquitted Jesus four times, but he was shouted down by the mob, and he also gave in to the religious pressures. They never dreamed that one day they would stand before the holy and just God on the day of judgment and look into the face of the one they had crucified. As we see here, the devil uses all the world religions against God. And if, it's, if it ain't truth, it's a liability for your soul. It is finished. Then he said, Into thy hands I command my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Luke twenty three forty six. The priceless thick veil in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem covered the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom. Look, it's ripping. God hid at the heart of the Jewish religion. The Jewish religion was no longer accepted by God. Jesus was the final sacrifice. Now the only way to God was through Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. 
Satan was defeated because three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. Luke 24, 1 through 7. If the powers of darkness had known this would happen, they never would have crucified the Lord. 1 Corinthians 2, 8. Forty days later, he went up into heaven after telling us that he would return again. A few days later, when the disciples were praying, God, the Holy Spirit, came down from heaven and filled the believers with power from on high. Acts 2, 1-47 And they turned the world upside down by telling people the good news that Jesus died for their sins and that they could escape from Satan's death grip. The Jews continued to perform the temple sacrifices, which were an insult and abomination to God in heaven. His own son had been sacrificed once for all, to abolish all sacrifices, yet the Jews kept it up. Hebrews 9, 11-15, Hebrews 10, 1. The Lord stopped the sacrifices in the year 70 AD. Jesus and the prophet Daniel prophesied that this would happen, a Roman General named Titus ravaged Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. Matthew 24, 1-2 and Daniel 9, 26. The Jews who lived through this Holocaust fled to different countries for safety. Since then, God has kept them from rebuilding the temple so they wouldn't start sacrificing animals again. The church was growing and Satan declared full-scale war against the gospel. Persecution broke out, scattering the Christians across the country and the world to spread the faith. Already, Satan had infiltrated the early church. The devil set up his magnificent phony Christian church in Rome under Constantine in 337 AD. Note, Constantine was never a Christian. He secretly worshipped the sun God until his death. Satan used the Roman Catholic institution to persecute and try to wipe out the true believers and the teachings of Christ. The real church was hiding up in the mountains to escape death. Kill those devils in the name of God. Instead of sacrificing animals like the Jews did in the temple in Jerusalem, Satan set up a new ungodly and more dangerous type of sacrifice called the Mass. The Roman Catholics claim they are sacrificing the very body of Christ over 200,000 times a day worldwide by repetition and continuation. What a blasphemy. They claim to pull Christ down out of heaven each time Mass is performed. This is not the Lord's Supper as many Protestants have been led to believe. It is Satan's deadly imitation. This satanic invention became official in the year 394 AD, not in Jerusalem, but in the great Roman Catholic temple in Rome. Dr. Rivera, if Satan infiltrated the apostles with Judas and then the early church, how about his infiltration today after so many centuries? If I tell you, you might get sick. The Bible warned us about false prophets, infiltrators, and wolves sneaking in among us. But because preachers have not preached on this subject, Christians figured it doesn't apply to today. Why should it? Doesn't everybody love everybody? Especially in the 20th century? So the Christians went into a sound sleep. But Satan hasn't been asleep. His people have been quietly sneaking into the church for years. Mason, witches, homosexuals, etc. And pretending to be Christians. Then the Pope sent his troops into the Protestant churches to finish the job. They were undercover Jesuits, Catholics, Young Action, Legion of Mary, and priests and nuns in street clothes to teach and preach the, from the pulpits, telling us that the Roman Catholic institution is a Christian church, which almost all Protestants believe to be true. Gentlemen, when a Pope of Rome can come to the USA in power and glory, and be flattered by great evangelists. And then this arch enemy of the gospel is welcomed into the White House by a Baptist president. Granting him all the honors of a chief of state and the spiritual leader of 800 million Roman Catholics.
Page 14, time, October 1579. And when the president let, lets the Pope blast this nation, then you know the game is almost over. About the only prominent voice opposing his visit was from an atheist. Our great defenders of the faith were silent. It was Madeleine Murray O'Hare, the atheist who opposed it. It's incredible that some of the great defenders of the faith have gone to the Vatican to try and see the Pope to have dialogue with him or obtain his blessing. What a shame. The founders of the denominations would be outraged to see how far they have fallen away from the gospel. Let me tell you of one of Rome's greatest undercover agents working in the U.S. with whom I talked a number of times. She was associated with the Legion of Mary. She was assigned to penetrate the Pentecostals and the Protestants through the charismatic movement. She was a master of hypnosis and had tremendous psychic powers. This woman, through her evangelistic campaigns, did a tremendous job for Rome. She had to establish the Roman Catholic Code of Ethics. This is how she did it. Number one, she treated backs backslidden Roman Catholics as if they were saved. She didn't encourage charismatic Roman Catholics to leave their own church. She had preached, she had priests and nuns on her platform to persuade Protestants that Roman Catholics are saved and should stay in their own institution. And she told the Protestants to do the same thing. She united them all with the love gospel and her charming smile. As a reward for her outstanding work, she was granted a private audience with the Pope. You understand when a person is granted such an audience, he or she must bow down and acknowledge the Pope as Jesus Christ on the earth. And for this, he holds their hands in a special blessing for a job well done. But since we hold upon this earth and the place of God or my... Sorry, that was just a side note. Here is a picture of one of Rome's best agents. I can't believe it. What a shock. This, this woman was loved by thousands of Christians. Yes, that's true. The Pope has never blessed an individual that is a heretic. And to them, a heretic is the Catholic Church is one who opposes Rome's teachings. There is no record in history that this has ever happened. It is strictly forbidden under canon law in the Roman Catholic institution. 60% of her audience was Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic Catherine Coleman. She pushed for unity, calling for priests, rabbis, and pastors to be one. A special mass was given for her in Las Vegas. Alberto, did you know she was an agent for Rome when you were a Jesuit priest? Of course, Tim. Most of us in undercover work knew about her activities. Warning to Christians. May God keep us from putting pastors and leaders up on pedestals. It only brings us disappointments and bitterness when they fall. We must put our trust and eyes only on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one who will let us down who will not let us down. Check these scriptures. 1 1 John 2:18, 2, 2 Corinthians 11:34 and Matthew 24:24. 24, 24. You see, at the beginning the Pentecostals were a tremendous threat to Rome. Not their speaking in tongues, but their teaching on separation and holiness, which we dreaded. The Pentecostal pastors blasted Rome from the pulpits, from the pulpits, especially at the Old Brush Arbor meetings. Rome is the whore of Revelation 17. Amen. But finally, we su we succeeded in gaining control. You can't tell they no longer preach separation but unity. Don't think that the infiltration was just among the Pentecostals, Charismatics, or the Economical Movement. The Fundamentalists and New Evangelicals have also been secretly subdued. 
Catherine Coleman was only one of the many undercover agents in high Christian places directly or indirectly tied to Rome. Rome is working with them and through them. God helped the Christians to open their eyes and be alert to this. Check the great evangelists and Christian leaders and study what they said about the Pope's visit to the U.S. Did they remain silent or were they excited about his visit and showed respect? Then those then those Christian experts or false on false religions who claim to be protecting the body of Christ from false teaching know full well that Rome is bow worship with the phony Christian front. Why haven't they sounded the alarm? Only one or two have tried, but the majority are either afraid or are deep agents themselves. In November of 1979, the Pope met with the leader of the Orthodox Churches of the city of Istanbul, of Istanbul in Turkey. New York Post, Thursday, November 29, 1979. This union will put the Orthodox Churches under Rome, giving the Pope a total of 1 billion people. The politicians of the world now fear this man's power more than the atomic bomb. The world leaders not only fear the Pope's, the Pope's following, but also Rome's tremendous wealth under the Vatican flag. But historically and prophetically, the horror of, the, the horror of Revelation is our enemy. Revelation 7.6 Satan uses the Vatican to orchestrate our destruction. Revelations 18, 2, and 3. Rev very few realize that Rome is secretly united with Illuminati, Masonry, Communism, Zionism, and their subsidiaries to control banking and world commerce. They also use the media to manipulate almost everyone on earth. The net result, one church and one world government. The world system has only one deadly enemy left, the independent Bible-believing Christians who will not bow down. Thank God we have a blessed hope. When the final inquisition starts, Rome's cleverly devised plan will legally prevent any little groups of Christians from hiding out. Rome and her allies closed the gates by using another undercover Jesuit, whom I knew personally. His name was Jim Jones. Jones was a Jesuit deacon, a layman on special assignment under oath. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a, with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The Jamestown's massacre was well planned as a military, religious, and political event. The truth behind this is well hidden. Dr. Beter's audio, tape 40, November 1978, explains the military reasons why the body count went up after a Russian missile base was knocked out between Georgetown and Jonestown just after the massacre. Only that one tape by Dr. Beter, I believe, is fairly reliable. Jim Jones was a student of Father Divine, a demon-possessed preacher deep into the occult. Jones was a powerful warlock and a well-trained Jesuit. Jones was into the economical and charismatic work. He preached the love gospel. Most of his followers were Roman Catholics and from Roman Catholic backgrounds. Others were unsaved Protestants from a variety of denominations. In 1953, he established the Christian Assembly of God Church. In 1962, he became a missionary to Brazil, associated with the Christian Assembly of God, which he founded. In 1964, Jones was ordained under the Disciples of Christ Church. His key people were Roman Catholics. And like a good Jesuit, Jim Jones ordered his followers to call him Father and pray to him in 1973. Isn't it strange that an unimportant leader of a small church would attract top figures from the political and religious world alike? Mrs. Rosalind Carter, representing the President of the U USA, Governor Jerry Brown, Jesuit trained, he, he was mayor in the 
until last uh, California in, until 2018. That's crazy. Uh, Mayor Moscow of San Francisco, as well as state senators, assemblymen, and attorney generals, he was endorsed by several religious leaders. I believe all of this was part of the setup for the massacre to receive worldwide coverage. Jim Jones planned and prepared under instructions from Rome to sacrifice his flock to fulfill his Jesuit oath. When it was over, the world was in shock. The press and TV worldwide implied Jim Jones was a crazy Bible-believing fundamentalist. Immediately, all fundamental churches fell under suspicion. What a diabolical conspiracy. They, the cry went up that politicians should pass laws forbidding groups from setting up retreats. This way, Bible believers would have no place to hide when the great wave of persecution from Rome begins. Wow, that's crazy. Alberto, we've been betrayed. Why haven't our Christian leaders warned us? They never say anything about it on television. Because many are not real Christians. Those who know the truth are afraid to say anything for fear of losing their followers. Also, they need Catholic contributions to keep them alive. They are even making Roman Catholics believe they are saved. How tragic. Is that why so many priests and nuns appear on Christian networks? Network talk shows? Absolutely. It's destroying the believers and Rome loves it. As we, as we as believers must forgive them, love them, and pray for them. God will be their judge, not us. When will Christians stop putting their leaders on pedestals? Jesus warned us in Matthew 24, 23, and 24. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here's Christ or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The Protestants are facing the most dangerous time in history, moving directly into the arms of the whore of Revelation 17. Our pastors must sound the alarm and preach repentance with a total separation unto Christ and his teachings, or they are lost. My heart is broken for the faithful Roman Catholics who have been betrayed by their false Christ, sitting in the Vatican giving them false hope of ever going to heaven. Millions in hell were cursed the popes and their priests for teaching them that their institution plus Christ will get them into heaven. God helped them to come out of her and trust Christ alone for their true eternal salvation. Rome still teaches that there is no salvation outside the Church of Rome. The end. Thank you for listening. And this concludes part two of Dr. Rivera's testimony of an ex-Jesuit. I will be doing part three um, later. The next comic series um, testimonial is going to be um joseph smith just to switch it up a little and after that i'll come back to the Je uh, dr rivera series may this have been an edification for you god bless you in the name of jesus like subscribe and share and take care guys